Hi guys and welcome to this guide about the Race Flight Revolt F4 flight controller. I just got the board uh, in the mail yesterday and decided to do a little video about it. I'm gonna walk you through all the steps you need to do to get your quad flying with this little flight controller. I'm just gonna open it up real quick. And you get some spaces for your flight controller to absorb the vibrations which are caused by your quad. And you also get the flight controller itself. It's really shiny and looks really cool. And as you can see, the gyro um, is placed right in the middle of the board which should make your quad fly a lot better than with all the regular boards out there. But let's get right to it. First of all we need to update the Revolt. So to get started we need to download a few things. The first one is Zedic. The links to all these downloads can be found in the description below if you wonder. But the Zedic tool um, is only needed if you are a Windows user. So download that. You're also going to need the STM32 virtual comport drivers from this website. You can download it right here. And you need the race flight configurator. And you need the firmware for the Revolt board. If you want the latest and greatest beta builds, you have to download an app called Slack because on the website there are a little bit older builds. And on the Slack application, it's just a chat room with all the developers of Race Flight and a lot of beta testers. You just head to the channel details, go to the pinned items and download the firmware for the Revolt. This is the version for all the other transmitters. If you're a Spectrum guy, you just need to download this firmware. And since this is a newer version than the version on the websites, the race flight configurator out of the Chrome Web Store doesn't work with it so you need to download and manually install a new configurator. You can always find the newest configurator at the pinned items but somehow it's not not there currently so I just headed to the shared files tab right here and found it. This is the file. So I put all my downloads in this folder right here and you have to start with installing the driver. I already installed it, so I'm not going to do it again. And um, then just open up Zedic. And now I'm going to plug in my board. The LEDs light up and you click to options and list all devices. Select STM32 virtual COM port and install the CDC drivers. This one right here. Hit upgrade driver and you're done. As I already said, you have to install the configurator manually. You just go to the three dots on the corner right here to tools and extensions and then just drag and drop the file in there. I already installed it, so I'm not going to do it again. And this is the configurator. It works as you see so I'm just gonna start it up head to apps and race flight as you can see the right com port is already selected com6 and so I'm just gonna hit connect the board seems to work because when I move it it moves in the software as well so now let's install the newest firmware I just click on DFU mode right here to set the board to DFU mode without having to shorten the bootloader pads. And as you can see, DFU mode is selected. So go to the firmware flasher, load firmware local, and select the firmware you downloaded. This is BB425 in my case. Hit open and flash firmware. It's gonna take a while, and if it doesn't work, just restart Chrome or you can restart your computer or just do it a few times. Sometimes it's a little bit buggy and it works after flashing two or three times. But if it doesn't work at all um, with the DFU mode, as I did it right here, you have to shorten the bootloader pads. And 
you have to reinstall the drivers because it doesn't work with the CDC driver. So um, in my case, it's already in bootloader mode, but with the bootloader pads, you have to scroll down and choose the Win USB drivers and reinstall that. However, mine seems to work, so I'm just gonna stick with this DFU mode right now. As you can see, the flashing was successful and I'm gonna hit connect and we are on the latest firmware. You can prove it by just typing in the command dump and scrolling up to the top and as you can see it's BB425. So that's done. I'm just gonna hit disconnect and unplug the flight controller. If you're done updating the flight controller, the next step is to solder every wires to the board. In my case, I'm gonna follow the wire diagram I made. And as you can see, I'm gonna use a lot of the features. I'm gonna use the, the buzzer, I'm gonna use the LED strips, and I'm also gonna use the voltage monitoring via the VBAT, or I guess it's called the volt voltage pad on the flight controller and an important thing you have to remember is to jump uh, these two pads the 5 volt and the VCC to enable the 5 volt output via this pad right here to power your uh, receiver if you use a spectrum receiver you have to use the right hand ports and choose um, 3 dot three volts for the satellite receivers and for the normal receivers, I guess you can go with the 5 volts. As you can see, I already pre tinned all the pads uh, I'm gonna need. And be really sure to not apply more than 5 volts to the board, because um, it's gonna smoke and be dead. I just finished tidying up the whole wiring situation. I ran all the wires to the bottom of the board, which makes it a particularly clean build. You can't see any soldering or any wires from the top. And as you can see, this is my X4R receiver. And I also ran the telemetry wire to the board. And these wires are just um, for the LED board with the integrated buzzer. I didn't get it in time, so... I just ran some wires to the back side of the copter. This is like for powering the LEDs. This is for controlling the LEDs via the revolt. And this is like the buzzer power. It's worth mentioning to not tighten the screws too much. The flight controller should be able to move if you, if you really push it. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but I can feel it that it moves um, just to not stress the board with tightening the screws too much uh, but yeah that's basically it so i'm just gonna plug in my battery and see if everything works as you can see everything works there's no smoke or any smell coming from the flight controller so i guess i didn't fail anything yeah but now I'm just gonna head to my computer and uh, we're gonna reflash the ESCs and later on we're gonna set the board up with the race flight configurator. To get the most out of your quadcopter you need to use the latest Multishot or Bill Halley S firmware, however you wanna call it. Um, you can use the built-in ESC flasher of the race flight configurator. However, if you're in a beta, as I am, you can still soft brick uh, your ESCs if you use this flasher. This problem will be sorted out in Race Flight 1, I guess, but up to now you can soft brick them. So I'm gonna use another tool called Beal Harry Suite. To use it, uh, we need to install a uh, beta flight to the Re Revolt board because if you use the beta builds of Race Flight, the Beal Harry Suite doesn't recognize the board. So we're gonna have to set up and set the board to DFU mode again. It's now in the DFU mode, as you can see here. And now we're gonna go to the beta flight configurator. 
just go to the firmware flasher right here and uh, select show unstable releases um, otherwise you probably can't find the revolt board so I'm just gonna choose revolt and choose the latest build enable full chip erase and click load firmware online it's gonna take a while and now hit flash firmware as you can see the programming was successful in my case it worked with the DFU mode but if it doesn't work for you just shorten the bootloader pads and follow the procedure I told you uh, in the updating section of the video so I'm just gonna hit connect and as you can see it works and um, we are on beta flight so just disconnect the board and close the configurator and close the race flight configurator the only thing we need to download is the Beal Heli suite from this link right here it's in the description you can also find the link to this uh, github site uh, you can check if your ESCs are supported for example my ESCs are the DYS XS30A and uh, I need the firmware AH30 keep that in mind and always check before you flash because the BLHD suite actually shows you what the program wants to flash your ESCs to and it should be the same version as it is said on this website so I have everything downloaded already so I just gonna start up BL Heli Suite and now just select uh, the Silabs BL Heli bootloader clean flight uh, and uh, as you can see COM port 7 is already selected uh, and now hit connect of course your board has to be plugged in now I plug in my LiPo and hit uh, read setup. In my case every ESC was recognized just hit OK and OK and yeah now if you want to update the firmware just hit flash BL heli and as I said just check if this is the right firmware in my case it's the right one so just click at it and hit OK. I actually have firmware 16.6 already installed, but just to show you, you have to hit yes. If it says flashed file, everything worked, hit OK. And I want to uh, write the current settings to ESC1, so I hit yes. And now it wants to flash uh, ESC2. But in my case, as I already said, all my ESCs are on 16.6, so I don't have to do it. You can see it here again. Everything is on the, uh, on the same firmware. And now you have to change some values. The race flight team advised to set the startup power to 0.125, the DEMAC compensation to high, and the brake on stop to on. I like to run my motor timing at medium because I use 2300 kV motors. But if you're done, just uh, hit write setup. In my case, it has nothing to write because all my ESCs are set up correctly. Just hit OK. And now a really important step is to unplug the, the battery before hitting disconnect. So I'm going to unplug the battery first. And now I'm gonna click on disconnect. However, I still wanna check if my motors are rotating in the right direction. So I go to the motors tab and plug in my battery again. And now I just hit, I understand the risk because I don't have any props on. These numbers for the ESCs are actually wrong because these are for beta flight only. At race flights the motor 1 is motor 3, 2 is motor 2, 3 is motor 4 and 4 is actually motor 1. So I just gonna test motor 1. I pull up the slider. 
this is in the configurator, it's motor 1, but actually it is motor 3 on the Revolt uh, flight controller. So motor 3 has to spin in clockwise direction, so I'm gonna grab paper and put it against the motor. And as you can see, it spins clockwise. So this motor is fine. Now you just have to check all the other motors and then your ESCs are pretty much ready to go. Since we are still on beta flight, as you can see right here, we need to flash race flight again. However, you don't have to set the board to DFU mode. Uh, you can just click disconnect, close beta flight and open up race flight configurator and go to the firmware flasher, load your firmware again, in my case BB425, and just hit flash firmware. Now it sets the board to DFU mode itself and erases the board and flashes the firmware. As you can see the programming was successful, so just hit connect. And now we're going to set up all the stuff we need. I just finished setting up the quad. Uh, I didn't have to change a whole lot, but you still got to do it to get your quad flying. At the ports tab, I enabled URT1 as Serial RX because I use FreeSky. If you use Spectrum, you use URT3 as Serial RX. At the configurations tab, I enabled multi-shot and just left the minimum throttle value at 1065. The SBUS inverter has to be turned on if you use SBUS and the loop control uh, has to be set to H8 if you do any changes within the race flight configurator. If you go out and fly, you, you can set it up to everything you like, but for setting up the revolt board, just run H8. The motor PVM rate is of course at 32,000 and the sensor configuration is set to gyro only. I enabled the VBAT uh, feature and if your voltage readings are somehow wrong, just play with this value uh, until you find the sweet spot. I enabled the telemetry output and the serial uh, receiver provider is set to SBUS. I'm not gonna go into the PID tuning thing, just look it up on YouTube. You have to check the receiver if everything works correctly. In my case everything and every stick, every every switch does the right thing. So if anything is wrong here just set it up in your transmitter or change the channel map to the receiver, uh, sorry the transmitter you are using. I also set up a few modes. I set up AUX3 as ARM and uh, I also set up Schizo mode. It's enabled all the time as you can see. You can use the other modes as well, but I'm just gonna use the Schizo mode. The beeper is really important. I set it to a switch and whenever I crash my quad, I just enable the beeper to find it. It's really, really handy if you land in high grass or if you don't see your quad. You can set up your LEDs right here. Sadly my LEDs didn't arrive in time but it's really easy. You just set the number of LEDs and set the LED mode to your liking and the color to your liking and hit save. But other than that there's not much else to it. I hope you enjoyed the video and it helped you. Thanks for watching and bye.